The friendship dynamic between Billy Loomis and Stu Marker is one that has always been fascinating to watch during the first Scream movie in 1996. Their friendship appeared to be built upon a foundation, a foundation that Billy himself seemingly laid down for Stu to feel comfortable enough to walk on. But there was a key moment in Scream 1996 that appeared to change this dynamic between the pair. In today's video, I provide some insight into the specific scene and a full analysis of what this scene did for the pair's friendship before they met their ends at the end of the movie. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Beyond the Mask. Over the next few days, I'm going to be assessing a lot of untold dynamics between many Scream characters, specifically the killers. There's a lot hidden within context, context that sometimes isn't overly clear on screen. So I'm looking to answer questions like, did Charlie Walker ever suspect that Jill Roberts would betray him? Why did Mickey Altieri's pattern kills stop following a specific pattern? And what was the true reason that Richie Kirsch managed to get Amber Freeman on side? So make sure you stay tuned for that, hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. But today we're discussing the key moment in Scream 1996 that changed the dynamic between the killers of the movie. So let's just dive straight in here. During the climax of Scream 1996, there's a moment in Stu Marker's kitchen where he and Billy are basically telling Sydney everything, down to their murders and even elements of the past like how they framed Cotton Weary and so on. Now if you watch the movie, there's a particular moment where Sydney is basically asking both of them what their motive was, or more specifically, why they killed her mother. Now, Stu, during the segment in the final act, is quite interesting to observe, because if you watch the dynamic between the pair, Stu is quite playful initially. He goes along with the taunting of Sydney and shows no remorse at all for anything that has transpired. However, when Billy eventually confesses to Sydney that his actual motive was due to her mother, Maureen Prescott, having an ongoing affair with his dad, Hank, thus resulting in the breakup of his parents, the look on Stu's face pretty much changes entirely. So watch this scene again. Your slut mother was fucking my father. And she's the reason my mom moved out and abandoned me. How's that for a motive? Stu's whole demeanour completely changed at this point. Now before I go deeper with this, on the surface here, it seems to me that Stu wasn't aware of Billy's real motive because this expression is a shocked one to me. He's visually surprised that Billy does indeed have a motive and it does connect to his parents. So moving forward, I went back and read through the original draft for the movie to find perhaps some further insight into this particular look that Stu gave. The fact is, it isn't present in the original draft as the motive for that script had Maureen play a more negative role by them confirming she had sexually assaulted Billy and Stu at some point whilst they were underage. Then they had numerous edits and rewrites and in one of the later scripts, there's little context except for one brief moment. Billy, is that motive enough for you? Or how about this? Did you know that your slut mother was sleeping with my dad and she's the reason my mom moved out and deserted me? A sudden silence, Sydney is rigid with shock. His words resonate with truth. What? asked Sydney. Even Stu is surprised with his seriousness. Even Stu is surprised at his seriousness is literally all the script gives. Now by the time that we had Scream 1996 released in theatres, a lot of context from the script was changed, some stripped away, others enhanced, but this particular scene has a brief connection to something that happens later in the movie, but isn't present in the scripts you can read for the movie, meaning it likely was a creative decision possibly by Wes Craven or even Kevin himself who was working closely with Wes on set. So Stu went along with this whole setup for fun basically, making him an extremely dark killer in my opinion. He didn't know Billy's motive, so he wasn't doing this for his friend, you know, as like an act of revenge. He was doing it without any real persuasion, and to me, that's dark. And this look here indicates he absolutely didn't know what Billy was in this for. Now what I'd like you all to do is, assess the behavior between Billy and Stu before this reveal, 
observe the closeness of their contact, the closeness of their scenes and how Stu moves along with Billy like they'd rehearsed this entire thing beforehand. But then following this reveal, watch this moment. Give me the knife. Oh. Give me the knife. Now! The dynamic had changed here. Despite the fact that initially Stu handed Billy the knife with no issues at all, in a somewhat cartoonic manner, he later didn't want to give it him back, and his response here absolutely indicated that Stu no longer trusted Billy anymore. The reason this is important here is because the lack of trust between the pair in this moment isn't alluded to in the script. They simply proceed to stab each other with no real issue or response from either of them. But the look that Stu gave Billy in the movie during the reveal scene had no context in the script either, indicating that these two moments were enhanced when they were on set between Wes and Kevin. That lack of trust was important to the story as their issues with each other eventually led to them losing possession of the gun. The small glimpses of their relationship in this final act, and while some overlook it, it's obvious to me they've begun falling apart from this lack of trust. The significance to how Billy was handed the knife initially, to how Stu later showed reluctance to hand it back to him, was very telling. After all, Stu was in this for fun. Billy on the other hand had his own motives and still hadn't expressed any of this to Stu, leaving Stu to feel like a mere pawn in this story, which ultimately led him to being fearful of his own life at the very end of the story. If you're unaware, I'm currently working on a novelization that will continue the Lakewood story that was set up in MTV Scream. The book will serve as continuation to the story where it left off in season two and has been okayed by the showrunners of the show and will have the official Paramount title attached to it. If you would like early access to the novel, then you can join my Patreon below, but I will be releasing chapters every month over there so you guys will see how everything goes down before it hits Kindle sometime this year. The link to Patreon is in the description below. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to like, share, and be sure to subscribe so you can stay notified for future content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.